everyone. Welcome back to my channel, So So Blessed with Glenda So So. Thank you for coming back to visit me again. Um, if this is your first time visiting my channel, uh, why don't you go ahead and subscribe or hit the like button if you care to do so and share it with a friend. So my channel is a inspirational channel. I like to give encouraging um, Christian based um, spiritual encouragement, however you want to call it. Uh, that's what my channel is about. So again, if you're new to my channel, this is your first time stopping by, I want to say thank you and hope that you'll come back to see us again. As always, thank you to my faithful subscribers. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of something different this time. Uh, a little uh, kind of twist on uh, my channel. I've been gone for a couple of weeks, so I'm back to record. Uh, today, I've been away on travel for work and my week has just been busy traveling and working uh, again with the stuff that I have when I'm not recording. So, you know, we all have busy lives, right? So, um, but yeah, I thought about doing something different today. So I'm going to um, come right back, but I want to first introduce what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to kind of mix it up, um, but I am going to bring some encouraging word. And what I want to talk about is we had, um, we have Sunday school at my church. Uh, but instead of having it on Sundays now, we have it on Tuesday nights. We move the day around. So it's basically Bible study, but it's Sunday school lessons uh, that we um, teach from with our Sunday school material. So, and we had one um, on last Tuesday. It was so great. The series that we're teaching on from the book. Um, last Tuesday's topic was the word resurrects the dead. When I tell you we had such a good Holy Ghost time, in, uh, on Zoom doing that Sunday School Bible study. It was awesome. So I'm going to share with you um, a little bit from that Sunday School lesson that we have. I'm even going to show you some clips uh, from the teaching that we had on that night and want to invite any of you out there, if you're interested on joining us maybe in our Sunday School uh, Bible studies, feel free. Let me know. I'll um, put it in the comments. And if you're interested, I will definitely send you the link. Uh, to your email address to our Zoom recordings, and that way you can look at the entire teaching uh, from that lesson. Um, if you want to actually join in on our Tuesday nights, you can do that as well. So again, send it. Uh, give me your comments down in the comments section below if that is something that you would be interested in doing, and I will gladly. Uh, we will be happy, more than happy, to send you our Zoom ID uh, that you can join in with us on these uh, Bible study teachings on Tuesday nights at seven. So, um, yeah, I'm going to um, come back and introduce to you what uh, what my new idea is. I'm going to kind of combine some things uh, on this channel. So it'll be a little combination of um, still giving you some spiritual encouragement um, with some other stuff. So I'll be right back and we'll take it from there. Okay. All right, everyone. So I'm back. Um, and as you can see, I'm not in my uh, usual swing chair. I am in my kitchen where I live pretty much. That's my oven going off. I'm getting ready to cook and it's letting me know that it's reached the temperature. So I thought what I would do today is just something different on this channel. Um, combining a word of encouragement along with I love to cook you guys that follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. You know me. I'm always cooking. I, I, I love to cook and try to come up with this, different recipes and things. And uh, one of the ways that I make run, uh, money and raise funds for my nonprofit organization is by cooking and selling dinners. And um, for those of you that are watching this and you purchase uh, a few of my dinners when I sell them, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Uh, Mike, if you're out there, let me give a shout out to him. He's one of my very loyal uh, customers that always purchase a dinner from, from me. and. Uh, thank you as always uh, the money is not uh, is going to good use for my cancer foundation um, just to share and I pro I've probably shared before but um, the funds have gone towards uh, a young lady who's um, lost her husband to cancer um, she no longer has him there to do the stuff like mowing her lawn or trimming the, back the bushes and things like that and so um, I was able to connect her with my landscaper guy 
who has a landscaping business. So the funds that uh, are raised from dinner, selling these dinners, will go towards stuff like that. I was able to pay for her to get that done. He was able to do it, and the money came from Jordan's River. Um, other things, um, and you can go on my website because I post these things on there so that people know that the funds are being put to good use. Um, but yeah, so that's one, just, just an example of one of the things, um, spa treatment. I was able to give somebody who was going through a cancer treatment um, a spa day, you know. Um, I'm, from what I understand, um, I don't know personally, but from what I understand, the uh, cancer treatment that uh, the patients get can be very, very exhausting and draining. And, and um, I don't know if it's even painful, but... Um, Jordan's River just wants to be able to offer some kind of relief uh, to these cancer patients and their caregivers. Uh, you know, I'm a caregiver myself. My father was diagnosed with stage four cancer, even though we, we speak his healing and deliverance. You know, the doctors are always amazed by his uh, report every time he goes. They're like, you should really be in pain. You should really be like excruciating pain and just on your way out the way that they had would have it and the way they say it but he's just as vibrant full of life and that's because prayer right we know prayer works um but i'm a caregiver and i know that um uh not firsthand because uh you know he's still very independent but i can imagine there are other people who are caregivers that their uh loved one can't really do anything for themselves and so they pretty much have to do everything and so jordan's river uh, uh uh what our desire and our goal is to cater to those you know so that they can feel like uh their life is just not surrounded by this this disease uh but they still have a quality of life you know so that's what the money goes towards you know if they want to just go to a movie or just go fishing or stuff like that you know life right the word of god says that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly and so jordan's river just wants to be able to share that abundant life uh for people that are uh, dealing with uh cancer so anyway that's uh, i'm in my kitchen um actually getting ready to cook dinner for sunday so but i love doing that and so i've had people ask me when i post things that i cook on my um uh, Instagram page and on my Facebook page I usually share the things that I make and I've had people ask me you know do you ship um, I'm working on that I've had people ask me uh, about a cookbook or something like that and I was working on that so I thought you know what I'm always so busy when I look like when I try to sit down to start uh, making out my recipes and writing out my cards and doing that stuff I just it just dawned on me you know what why not just share on a video like every I watch videos of people cooking all the time I watch the Food Network channel I get ideas from watching other people so you know I thought well Glenda why don't you just go ahead and and do that you know share your cooking skills on your YouTube channel so that's why I said this is gonna be a little twist to my channel because I know this specific channel was you know for specifically giving in spiritual encouragement uh, but why not combine the two right so you're going to eat spiritually and I'll show you how to cook some good food so then you can go eat naturally, right? So the two go hand in hand. So yes, yeah, so today I'm getting ready to prepare uh, my Sunday dinner for my family. My dad will be coming over and my children. And so I just wanted to show what I'm going to be making is a pork tenderloin. And I'm going to just kind of um, go back and forth. I'm going to, you know, turn the camera off. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be doing, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So right now, I washed off my pork tenderloin, and here it is. Uh, there it is, that big thing right there. So it's nice, pretty long. I've already washed it and cleaned it. Um, and now I'm getting ready to saute it in this uh, pan. I have my butter. And I'm getting ready to put some, um, I'm going to give it a char. So before I cook it in the oven, I'm going to give it a nice crispy char on the outside, charred um, grill, on my grill, on my pan. So I got some oil and some butter in the pan, and I'm getting ready to put some, um, I'm, I normally would use flour, but I'm going to use cornstarch. It's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use some cornstarch as my flour in place of my flour, and I'm going to put that over it, uh, drizzle it with some butter, put that on it, and then I'm going to let it sear in the pan on both sides for maybe like three to four minutes until it gets that nice char 
and then I'm going to show you what that will look like before I put it in the oven and I will let you know uh, come back and show you how I'm going to season it up and put it in the oven and let it cook and in the meantime while it's cooking then I will come back with some spiritual encouragement so I will be right back see you then everyone I am back and I'm getting ready to explain to you uh, what I'm getting ready to do and how I'm going to incorporate um, something else into my YouTube channel and you guys like I said know that I love to cook so I'm actually going to show you how I'm going to make this pork roast pork loin roast yeah pork roast there we go so I've already got my oven it's at 300 degrees it's preheated and I'm going to cook this for about three to four hours now like I said I like to um, look at other people's cooking channels and that's where I get inspiration from you know how we do we look at other stuff we get inspired and then I take that um, use kind of the basics of what they do and then I add my own little touch um, I like to give credit to whoever uh, you know I got the inspiration from this today that I'm doing, there's this lady that I follow. I believe her name is Chris, and I'll put her YouTube channel um, in the uh, in this video. And she has some very good country down home southern cooking. That's why one of the reasons I like to watch her. Um, and so this one I got from her. This um, not so much the recipe, but how I've never cooked a pork loin before, pork roast. So I looked at her channel and found a recipe that she did one and um got how to do it so my seasonings i love flavor please don't give me no bland food i love love full flavor i want to bite into my food and i want to still taste it after i done swallowed it 10 minutes ago and it's still tasting good right i like for the taste to linger and so i usually i love one day i have to show you guys my kitchen and my pantry i am a hoarder of spices food uh because i like to experiment with different flavors and things like that so yes y'all pray for your sister i'm a hoarder of uh, when it comes to spices and things like that i go to an amish market and get all my spices and things i'm going to use some of them um, i'm going to show you that i'm going to use on this pork loin this pork roast i don't know what to call it this roast okay it's a big old piece of pork so i'm going to go ahead and get started but that's what i wanted to introduce to my channel i'm going to do a little bit of both you know, I love to cook, so hopefully you guys will enjoy the word naturally and spiritually, right? Uh, the word of God said, uh, Jesus asked Peter, he said, feed, Peter, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. Will you feed my sheep and feed my lamb? So I'm going to try to do a little bit of both of that. Uh, and, and, and if you know your word, you know that Jesus, even when he was, um, you know, uh, teaching and his, during his minute, his time of his ministry, uh, there was a crowd of people following him and he was feeding people. You know, he turned the of uh, two fish and, and, and five loaves of bread you know he, he fed multitudes right five thousand people with two fish and five loaves of bread right so there was a point in time when jesus turned around and uh and he was saying to the people and i'm paraphrasing and he was like they're not following me for the word they're following me for the food so to me that was a lesson um that my father would often teach us uh, when we would go out into the streets and he would have us going out two by two, uh, you know, around the neighborhood by the church and we would be ministering to people. He says, sometimes, you know, when a person is hungry and you're trying to feed them the word of God, he said, they ain't trying to hear nothing. They want food. They hungry. They ain't, they've been trying to hear the word. So you got to sometimes reach the people naturally before you can reach them spiritually. So Jesus had a strategy, right? So I'm going to get the people to come with some food. But then I also have a uh, um, an agenda. I'm gonna give them the word at the same time. So that's what this is, this is about, right? Let's do this. So I before I signed off, before I was going to uh, give my roast a nice char, I've done that and I've even had a video clip of how I did it. Just some butter and oil in the pan. 
and this i'm gonna lift this up here this is a big boy here and that's what it looks like so see that thing is pretty i try to tilt it so it doesn't tip off you see that nice char and i did that on all sides and um like i and i learned this from the watching my video channels too uh youtube channels for cooking shows you do it on all sides i'm gonna actually bring my camera down and that way you guys can see because this thing is pretty let me see i don't even know how to do a camera that's a shame okay can y'all see that yes see how pretty that looks that thing is so gorgeous so that is um uh, now child if i can get my camera back up here okay there we go all right so it's nice and charred and now i'm going to season it because i'm going to put it in the oven and cook it like i said i tried it on all sides i did it on the sides and the corners on each end i stood it up and charred every side of it because i want when i cut into it i want that crunch right all right, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to use. I have, you can never go wrong, garlic powder. I garlic powder everything. Any kind of meats is always gonna have garlic powder on it. That's a staple in my kitchen, right? I love accent. Usually when I cook meat, now this is an old school. Some people, I don't even know if anybody uses accent anymore, but I love it. Now, accents, you gotta be careful because it's very potent, the flavor of it. And if you overdo it, it's way too much and it's gonna make your food taste horrible. So be very um, light with this, right? Be very light with this. But it does add, remember the commercial, Accent wakes up the food flavor? It does. So um, yeah, I use Accent whenever I use cooked meat. Now this is something that when I first started learning how to cook, um, my mother tried to teach me how to cook when I was younger. And my older sister, my, my two older sisters, uh, they did a lot of stuff around the house. My mother tried to teach her girls how to cook, house clean and all that stuff. Well, growing up, I was, I was sickly. I was in and out of the hospital. So when my mother tried to teach me stuff, and just a quick funny story, I had a sleeping disorder. And uh, those of you that know me out there, you know I can be talking to you one second and fall asleep right in the middle of a sentence and wake, back and, and wake up from the sleep and pick up where I left off at. Yes, it's called narcolepsy. Don't laugh, you know. <laughs> but I got some funny stories I have to share with you one day with my narcolepsy. So my husband that's watching this is probably cracking up right now. When we went on a date and I fell asleep with him at the table at a restaurant. Yes. All right. So Lowry's, when I first got married, this is to my first husband, not my husband now. Uh, but my, first, my husband now is laughing at me. But my first husband, my children's father, when I first got married, we were young. I was 20, uh, 22 didn't know how to cook but Lowry's was a lifesaver you use this on anything and your food is delicious matter of fact my children we call it uh I lived at my old address was 1500 Kirkwood so when my kids want that old school cooking that I used to use because now I done got introduced to the cooking channel and a whole bunch of other different spices I kind of neglected my Lowry's and put it in the back and hot stopped using it so when my kids want that old school taste that they used to like and it pop in your mouth, they call it the Kirkwood season. So back at Kirkwood, but I'm back to using it now. So I'm gonna have some Lowry's. Now I won't use a lot of salt. I, I barely use salt uh, when I season my food. At, well, when I was using Lowry's because it already has sodium, it's high in, you know, it has a lot of sodium, enough sodium in it. So I would never use both. Um, so this is my little salt shaker. If I'm not using Lowry's, then I'll use salt. But if I'm using one of the, I don't use both. So basically I use one or the other. Now today I'm gonna use a combination, but I'm gonna be very, very light on the salt. Lowry's, I'm using it because it has the flavor, right? And I know salt brings out flavor too, but Lowry has a distinct flavor of its own, which is why I love it. So I'm using some Lowry's. I'm going to have my parsley flakes. There we go. All this stuff I get from my Amish market. I have loads of, like I said, I have to show you and just do a walkthrough with my kitchen and my pantry one day. I got stuff all over the place. My pantry behind me is full. That's why it's closed. I don't want you to see it. But it's full of spices. I have spices overflow on my counters all around me because I have no more room in my pantry. Y'all go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. Your sister loves to cook. So that's my parsley. I'm using some whole savory. Okay, 
I'm gonna be, now this is another thing I always cook on any meats. This is called hickory smoke. When I tell y'all this stuff is so good, it gives it that smoke flavor. I've never smoked any meat. I did buy me a smoker. I can't wait to try it because I want to smoke some meat. Um, but this will give it that flavor, like you smoked it, and it's so good. So, uh, and I use this on every meat I cook. I all, this is another staple. It stays in my kitchen. I use um, smoked paprika, again, the paprika, but it's smoked paprika. And you just use a little bit because it's not going to be overpowered, you know, uh, with that smoke flavor because that's, that's not good either. But you just want a little bit of taste of that smoke. So I use smoked paprika. I'm going to use um, some, I don't have my onion powder, but I'm going to use this because the onion flakes and the powder is in there, you know, so it'll work. And I have some ground black pepper that I'm going to be using. I wish I had cracked black pepper, but I'm going to use this ground black pepper. And I have, now this may sound weird, but like I said, I love a, a variety of flavor that comes together. A friend once told me years ago, she said the best seasoning that you can have is, you, uh, is to use a dash of everything in your, in your spice can, a dash of this and a dash of that, and it all comes together. Uh, that depends, I wouldn't try that with everything now, but I actually did that, and a lot of stuff I made when I was first learning how to cook came out so good. So I'm gonna use some of my basil, my fresh basil here. Another thing I do is I like to use fresh food, um, garlic. Um, I, I, I don't use that paste, the garlic that you buy in a jar, the minced garlic, I don't use that. Use fresh stuff and your food will taste much better. So I, I use garlic cloves. Um, eventually I'm gonna grow my own garlic. I have a garden now and I have my tomatoes and my collard greens. I'm gonna make that for my dinner tomorrow. I just went in my garden today and I pulled them up. So I'm gonna cook those as well. And that's gonna go in my dinner. And I'll show everybody a whole picture when it's done. But I just wanted to show you how I do this pork roast today. And so those are my spices. Um, and I have melted here some um, butter that I'm gonna pour as some garlic, uh, a half a stick of butter, um, some garlic powder, um, two onion cloves that I put in here. They were whole, I didn't mince them because uh, I just want the flavor of the garlic in there. So I cut, I um, did two garlic cloves and I did some of these onion flakes too. So I took a half stick of butter and put all that in here and I melted it in the microwave. And now what I'm getting ready to do, what I'm gonna show you. So I'm mixing all this up, my garlic cloves and everything. And I'm now going to pour this over my pork loin because this is going to be so good and I want you to see this. Let me see. I gotta buy me a, a camera holder or something. So I'm gonna just pour this all over. So you see that? So there's my whole garlic clothes. So I'm doing that. I know y'all just cracking up at me. All right, so I am doing that. Let me get all of this out of here. And I have my roast on a rack. And I'll tell you in a second what I learned from Miss Chris, from her YouTube channel. So, she did it where she put it on a rack. And the reason she did that, and you can probably do it another way as well, but like I said, I watched her show today. And I said, I'm going to make this pork roast and this is how she did it. She put it on a rack. So what I'm doing now is I'm rubbing all of this in with my knife. I don't have my, I'm not putting my gloves on just yet. Cause I don't want anything to come up on the gloves. When you got good seasoning, and good flavor like this, I want everything to be on my meat. So I'm not even putting my gloves on to rub this in. All right, cause that, oh my goodness, that looks so good already. Let me show you. All right, see that? Oh my gosh, Glenda, learn how to operate a camera. All right, see that? That's the whole garlic cloves. And that's the garlic butter that's, yes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add my, I also did some onions, let me see. So after I charred my pork, I also caramelized these onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on top as well. But first I'm gonna do my seasonings. And then I'm gonna put those 
onions on last. So, like I said, I have my black pepper. Let's go ahead. Now, this is my dinner for tomorrow, you guys. So, I'm going to do my black pepper on that baby. Yes, there you go. You look so pretty. You look gorgeous already, and it's not even cooked all the way through. That's that char. All right, so I have my smoked paprika. And you see what I'm doing? I just do like a drizzle, you know, I just do. Some of it I do where I want it to be completely covered, so I may be a little more generous with it. Cause, but I'm gonna flip this on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so that is my smoked paprika. And now my hickory smoke, this stuff, I'm telling y'all, if you have an Amish market, I went to, it's called, and I think they're pretty much, you can find them, I know in Pennsylvania they have them here, I don't know if they have them, how far they go, but it, it's called the uh, PA Dutch Market, Pennsylvania Dutch Market. And so if you have one near you, go there, they have all the spices you could ever want. And I go there and I buy my spices. So here's my hickory smoke. You can be kind of generous with that. It's going to cook in. It's going to give it a little flavor. Uh, a great flavor. Not just a little flavor, but a great flavor. All right. And that, I'm going to now add my garlic powder. And then I'm going to show you what this looks like. So you can actually get an idea of how much I'm using. Um, like my mother, she didn't measure stuff. Um, I finally learned how to cook. Uh, even though I fell asleep, like I, I was telling my story, she was trying to teach me how to cook rice one day. And she said, okay, Glenda, she put the rice in there. And she said, now I want you to stand over the pot and I want you to just stir it, keep stirring it. So I, I went over to the pot and I started stirring it. My mother had to turn around to the sink to get something in that, in, in that quick seconds. She turned around and grabbed something. When she came back over to see what I was doing, I had I would have my hand on the spoon, and I was sleep cold with my with the spoon. I had stopped stirring and fell asleep. She just looked at me and said, "Woke me up." She said, just "Get out of here. Just go. Just go." I fell out laughing every time I think about that story. I laugh. So anyway, I'm now shaking some onion flakes. Again, I just want the taste of an onion. It's gonna be so good. I usually have onion powder, but I, I can't find what I did when I had a big thing. But this has the onion dust or residue, you know, flakes and the onion powder that will come out. So there, I did that. And my Lowry's. So my Lowry's, remember, we're not gonna do a whole lot of this. Um, it's got good flavor. We're going to be somewhat generous because I'm also going to do a little salt. Now, pork, I believe, is already salty. I'm, yes. So, just a little. Now, you're probably like, oh my gosh, you're going to put salt and Lowry's. But look at how little I'm doing. I'm just not, I'm not overdoing it with the salt. I, trust me, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not a salt eater you know if i have salt it's usually if i have some scrambled eggs all right so i did my accent i think i did my accent right no i showed y'all the accent but i didn't do the accent yet so we're going to do some accent like i said not a whole lot of this because it's very potent right now i think that was all of my spices and i'm going to now take my gloves and I'm going to now mash all of this in so that it can actually get down into that meat and cook in. And then I'm gonna flip the other side and do the same thing, but I wanna show you. Let me just show you real quick before I smash it all in. So see, that's all the seasoning. And once that cooks in, it's gonna be so good. It's going to be so delicious. Yep, look at that. See, it's turning a really pretty color. All right, so that's rubbed in real good. Now I'm gonna flip it on the side, on the back. 
And we're gonna do the same thing. I gotta take my gloves off carefully. I have to put them back on. So you guys, I, I, I really love this. I think this is a new thing for me. So I feel more comfortable when I'm, I'm in my zone. My niece, Taisha, calls it the lab. She said, Auntie Glenda, you in the lab? That means we in the kitchen cooking. So yes, I'm in the lab, um, Taisha. I have to tell you to watch this when I gave you a shout out. So I'm going to finish this up, but I'm going to give you a little bit of what the lesson was about on Sunday, I mean, on Tuesday night Bible study. And again, the lesson was talking about this topic of it was um, the word resurrects the dead. So when I tell you the lesson was so great um, and it was talking about Lazarus, um, when he you know he died in the story and he died and his sisters were upset i'm not going to tell you guys everything i'm doing because you already saw me do the first side so i'm just going to talk about the lesson now while i go ahead and season the other side of this pork so his sisters martha and mary uh jesus was in a nearby town and their brother lazarus had gotten sick now of course they know that um Jesus was doing all kinds of miracles and everything. And so they knew that he was nearby. And so um, they were uh, wanted him to come and, you know, heal his brother. You know, they wanted his brother to be healed because he was sick. Long story short, those of you that know the story, um, lo and behold, Jesus didn't get there in time, right? So Lazarus is dead. And now it's been four days that he's been dead. So they finally, you know, they went on ahead after he passed, um, they buried him, right? They wrapped him in the uh, his grave clothes and they buried him. So now Jesus comes into town, right? And he's um, Mary, uh, Martha comes running out and she's upset. You know, she's upset. She's like, Jesus, you know, where were you? You know, my brother was sick and you know, had you been here, he would still be alive, but you, basically you too late. You didn't. But what I loved about the, the story was that she also said in her frustration and in her um, anger, you know, she was angry, she was upset in her feelings. She said, I know that you, if, even if you speak the word, you know that he, he would live, he would live. So the Lord asked her, he said, do you believe that I will, I can raise, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing. Do you believe, uh, Martha, that I can raise Lazarus from the dead? And she said, well, of course, Lord, we are going to be raised from the dead. I know that I believe in you. I know you're the Messiah. I believe you're Messiah. And I know that the day is going to come when the trumpet shall sound and everybody's going to be raised from the dead. But basically, she like, I'm talking about right now. I wanted you to come and save him. I, don't, I know I'm going to see him again someday. But the Lord, when she said that, she said that with conviction. She was like, Lord, I believe you. I know you are the Messiah. And that's when God did the miracle. He said, okay. Her heart, uh, uh, you know, little did she know that he was talking about, I'm going to raise him right now. And he was taking that opportunity to raise Lazarus from the dead to do another miracle. Right? So, uh, earlier you heard me say that... Um, you know, she was like, Jesus, you too late. Well, we know that Jesus is never late, right? He ta he uses everything in our life. He uses every situation in our lives for a purpose uh, for him and uh, his father to get the glory, right? So he was four days late on purpose because that was his opportunity to perform another miracle so that his father could get the glory, right? So that's what he did. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He called Lazarus' name. And he told Lazarus, Lazarus, get up. Lazarus, get up. And so that's what he did. And Lazarus, if you know the story, he came up out of the grave. Now, here's the thing. And I love my father when he teaches this lesson and how he expounds on it. Lazarus was wrapped in grave clothes, right? And if you know... Um, back then, the graves down back then that time, they were steps, 25 steps down that lead down to the grave. Um, so when he called Lazarus and said, Lazarus, get up. 
Lazarus came to the top of the stairs, still wrapped in grave clothes. And then the Lord then spoke to the clothes and said, loose him. And the clothes begin to unravel, right? And Lazarus was now alive. The word, listen, the words that God spoke. Again, the topic is called, the word resurrects the dead. The Lord spoke a word and he said, Lazarus, get up. The word was get up. He called him by his name and said, get up. And when he got up, listen, the grave clothes still had, how did the power, listen, look at the power of the word of God. There was no way Lazarus could walk up the stairs because he was still bound in the grave clothes. But the power of the word of God spoken drew him up, rose him up, brought him to the top of that grave. And then Jesus finished it and spoke another word to those clothes that had him bound and said, loose him. He spoke to the clothes. What? He spoke to the clothes, y'all, and the clothes had to let him go. Listen, whatever, I, I was getting ready to pull out my, my Sunday school book because there was a whole lot in there. But I'm just giving you just a little bit. Listen, whatever situation you might be going through, whatever dead situation is in your life, whatever dead circumstance, and you feel like you might have been down there, he was, Lazarus was down there for four years. I mean, four days, right? You may be in a certain situation that might be four years or even longer, right? But there's a scripture in the word of God that says one day to God is, is a thousand years to us, right? So that, it may be a four years for your situation, but guess what? To Jesus, that's just four days. <laughs> what? So listen, whatever your situation is, whatever your circumstance, God is able to raise it up. If you just believe, right? Martha had no idea that he was talking about raising Lazarus up at that moment. She was thinking, yeah, I know in the future, God, I know what you're able to do. Sometimes we say that. We say, yeah, God, I know it's going to be all right one day. One day. But honey, your day might be today. Have faith and know that God says, I can do all things. He can do all things but fail, right? So he will raise up. Whatever situation, whatever dead situation is in your life, let, uh, just speak the words. He said, listen, the power of death and life lies in our tongue. We have some situations that be in our lives, right? That we can just use the authority that Christ has given us and speak to that situation. Mountain be moved, right? He spoke the word to that. And let me tell you, the, the grave clothes, right? That had Lazarus bound. Sometimes... You're going to have to do some fasting and praying. There's a word, a word of God. That's, there's a word in the scripture that says, these kind come by fasting and praying. Some things you can pray and it's all right. Some things are going to take some fasting and praying. Because let me tell you something. The devil don't want to lose you. He don't want to, he don't want you to, uh, he don't want to let go of his grip of whatever situation he has gotten you into, whatever situation that he thinks he's used. The one thing that we know the word of God tells us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper right so just like those clothes even though even though lazarus right the spirit that was spoken to rose him up to the top of the steps them clothes still tried no uh -uh, we ain't letting go we ain't letting them go we ain't letting them go that's how the devil would say uh, -uh i ain't letting it go i ain't nope nope i'm staying i'm here to stay jesus there's power in the name of jesus and all you got to do is speak to the situation when jesus spoke to those clothes he told those clothes loose him and they had to be loosed. That's the power that we possess in this earthen vessel, right? When you belong to the Lord and you're a child of God, you can call on the name of Jesus and he will move on your behalf. So my friends, I thank you for that quick uh, word of encouragement. The word resurrects the dead. Whatever situation, speak the word over it. Get your Bible. Listen, I, I love to use this analogy uh, that, that was in the Bible when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, right? And after he came off the fast, the, the word of God says that the Holy Ghost drove him into the wilderness. We know what the wilderness represents. Trials, tribulations, hurt, pain, everything, right? That's what's in the wilderness, right? But it says the Lord drove him in the wilderness to be tested. 
to be tested. God allows us to go through things so that he can get the glory when he brings us out. And we tell of his goodness and we give him the praise and we give him the honor, right? He, we would never know uh, how good God is and all the things that he's capable of doing if we never went through anything, right? What's that common saying that we say? No test, no testimony. There's got to be a test. So the word of God says that Jesus was driven into the wilderness, right? So when he got into that wilderness, the enemy was there to tempt him. To tempt him. What, for what purpose? So that the devil, he wants to get the glory. He wants to get the glory. So his mission was to look. I'm going to tempt you with everything. I'm going to throw everything at you but the kitchen sink. And he's going to throw the kitchen sink too. Right? So his thing was to get to get Jesus at a point of weakness. Now listen to this. My father, he teaches us. Jesus was in the flesh just as we are. Right? His whole purpose that he asked his father to, uh, uh, to um, prepare him a body so that he can come down and die for us. He needed to have this kind of body so he can understand everything that we were going to go through. All the hurt, all the pain, all the feelings, all the emotions, everything. Jesus needed to have the same kind of body so that he can identify with us, right? So his body, when he was on a fast for 40 days and 40 nights, don't you think he was hungry? He was hungry. Yes. So listen, when he was driven into the wilderness, the devil tempted him with food. He said, if you be the son of God, command those stones to become bread. He was tempting him at his weak spots where he thought Jesus was weak, right? So that's what he does to us. He tried, the Bible teaches us that uh, uh, nothing, uh, there is therefore now no temptation unto them. Uh, is that the one? I'm trying to think of the, uh, the scripture. I have to think about it, but I'll put it in the thing. But it's talking about... Um, it's talking about things that are common to us, right? So the devil is not going to, for instance, the devil is not going to tempt me with alcohol if I was never an alcoholic. That won't work on me. But he uses whatever we were weak at one time, right? And he uses it and tries to tempt us and try to get us to fall prey to that. So Jesus was hungry in the flesh. So he asked Jesus, listen, if you, if you, if you, if you're the son of God, then let me see you turn that bread and that stone into bread. Let me see if you're really the son of God. Let me, I'm testing you. Let me see if you, so, you know, uh, sometimes a lot of us, people dare us, right? A dare. You draw a line of sin. I dare you to cross over that line. Oh, you did. Oh yeah. Don't dare me because I do it. Yeah. Jesus was like, you know what? You're not going to get me with that. But what Jesus did was he used the word. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. So that's how we fight the enemy, right? The word, the word of God teaches us that our weapons are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. What stronghold? That thing that's got me so in the flesh that I can't seem to let go of. Well, God says, use your weapon. What weapon? Lord, use the word. That's what Jesus did. He used the word. So my friends, use the word and it will, it will resurrect, right? The dead. Listen, it may, not, it may be even you, your spiritual death. You may have been uh, walking with the Lord at one time and then you, you, you went stray, right? Maybe you're backslidden. But listen, use the word and let it resurrect that spirit in you. Right? So that you can get back on one accord with the Lord. So you can get back in a right relationship with the Lord. He's able to resurrect whatever dead situation is in your lives. So my friends, thank you so much for listening to my encouraging word. I'm going to now get this pork roast in the oven. I forgot to do my whole savory. So we're going to do that. I think I did everything else. Um, Y'all, I hope you're feeling all right with that word because I'm feeling pretty good. My Lord, he is awesome. I tell you also, if you want, um, I will put the um, in the comments, if you would love to have the recording of that Sunday school, Zoom Sunday school lesson that we did, I do have a recording of it. I'll be more than happy to send you the link and that way you can see the entire Sunday school lesson because it's very engaging. You know, when we have... Sunday school lesson. It's all of us that's on there that join on the Sunday school um, Zoom line. We engage, we talk, we communicate a lot. Of so my friends, let me show you this pork loin and it looks beautiful. I'm telling you, if I didn't know it was already, if that it wasn't done already on the inside, you know, this thing looked like it's ready to eat now. So this is my whole savory that I'm putting on. I usually also use rosemary. 
I don't have any rosemary sprigs. I love rosemary. Especially when you're cooking like uh, chicken and meat like the steaks, you know. Rosemary is very good. And this is just some parsley. So usually my parsley I would do at the end to kind of garnish. But it's already on there. So now I have my caramelized onions and I'm just going to lay them across. Because this is going to be so good, y'all. I wish you were here to join me for Sunday dinner. But I may have to post a picture <laughs> on my site so y'all can see me enjoying it. Me and my family. All right. I did some onions on that. So I'm going to save the rest because I'm going to use the juice that's going to... Oh, let me tell you why I put it on the rack. Because that's what Miss Chris said. My father taught me this as well. My father can cook too. He can throw down. But he also taught me that... Um, that you, when you have the fat side, you want to cook with your fat, the fatty side of the meat. Cook it with it. Um, uh, I think he said fat side down, but Miss Chris said fat side up. And the reason she said that is because the juice from the fat is going to marinate, is going to base the meat. That way, you know you don't have to take the juice and base it yourself. The fat, that's the juice that's coming from the fat is going to base the meat for you. And so that's why um, I have it like this and I also have it on the rack. And this is it, y'all. Let me see. Oh, don't that thing look pretty? Man, that looks so good. Make your mouth water, don't it? All right, guys, I am going to put this in the oven. It's on 300, preheated to 300 already and I'm not gonna cover it. I got, that was from Mrs. Chris's website. I usually cover my food to keep the heat in, to seal it and keep the juices in. But she put it in there, uncovered, and cooked it for about four hours, a little over four hours, so it can be nice and tender. And she took it out, and when she cut it on that video, it was so nice and tender. So yeah, I'm getting ready to stick it in the oven. And again, thank you. I'll show you once it's done how it's going to look. And I'm getting ready to um, put it in the oven now. I wanted to show my t-shirt here. Like I said, I have been very busy. Um, I was in San Antonio last week. So this is my shirt, my San Antonio shirt. You see, it says San Antonio. Very nice place. Very nice place. This right here is a picture of a restaurant. It's the highest, it's one of the tallest buildings in San Antonio. Skyscraper kind of building. And this circle part here, that's a restaurant. So uh, we ate at that restaurant and it, ro it revolves. It rotates while you're eating. That was so cool. So you can sit up there while you're eating and you can see the whole city. Uh, while you're rotating and uh, yeah, that was really cool. And so this is the Alamo, this building here. You can Google it in the history of the Alamo. And then I have, there's the boats. This is the river walk. So you see, uh, I went on a boat ride on the river walk and it's kind of like a Italy kind of vibe. And they purposely did it like that. They wanted to kind of uh, mimic what they had, uh, how it was over in Venice and Paris. And that's just what it looks like. And it was so beautiful. So if you ever get a chance to go to San Antonio, uh, go visit there. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching my channel. This is kind of a long one, but I incorporated some cooking. I hope you like this little twist to my channel. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Send me a comment. And I'll have some more recipes and things to share with you while I also share a word of encouragement. So we're going to eat spiritually and naturally. All right. So next time I'll be back and show you what this uh, is going to look like. And before we go, let me just go ahead and say a prayer. I didn't say a prayer before we open, but let me just pray. Father God, I come and say thank you for all of those that are watching this video, Lord God. I thank you for the ones, oh God, that are faithful subscribers, Lord. Um, anybody that comes across this channel, oh God. Lord, it's not by, by, by chance, but Lord, there is a word that needs to be heard by every person on the face of this earth, God. Your word even says it, that every man is going to hear. So, Lord, I pray that whoever comes across this channel and they hear the word that is spoken, Lord, that it be for them. That moment, that situation, whatever it is, God, let it be a word that will resonate. Let it be a word that will heal, set free, and deliver. That is what this channel is for. And, our Lord, I thank you right now that we will just, Lord God, be people, God, that will serve you that will honor you, that will reverence you. 
And we thank you in these blessings in your son Jesus' name we ask and we say amen. All right, guys. Until I see you next time, take care. I am blessed. You are blessed. We are so, so blessed. Take care. Okay, so I have my pork tenderloin all plated. I took some of my onions, I'm gonna show you. And I just put them over top. I wish I would have had like some. So there it is. And it looks delicious, you guys. It tastes good. I also tasted it and it is so good. So when I get my rice and everything, I'm actually gonna plate it and I'm gonna post it on my Instagram page. But again, as you can see, all the juice and the drippings that's in the bottom of the pan, I'm gonna take that and I'm actually going to use that to make my gravy. And I'm gonna put some gravy over this delicious pork tenderloin. And you guys, it is delicious. I'm gonna eat a little piece. And I'm telling you, it tastes fabulous. I'm gonna sop it in some of this gravy down here in this pan, some of these drippings. And I'm gonna show you, look at that. Isn't that delicious looking? I probably shouldn't be eating on camera, right? This is what they do on the cooking shows. Mm. Y'all, you gotta try it. All the flavors is there. It tastes delicious. Well, all right, guys, thank you so much. I thank you for joining me on my channel. I hope you've enjoyed the encouraging um, spiritual food. The uh, word resurrects the dead. And I hope you enjoyed my first combination of my cooking show on my channel. I will say that, again, when I followed Miss Chris' method of how to cook this, it was a pork butt she was cooking. This is a tenderloin. So I think instead of three hours, you can probably even do two hours. When I stuck my thermometer in, it reached 180 something. I think the safe temperature for me, internal temperature, is 145 and above. So I was way above. So I probably could have took it out at uh, two and a half hours. Um, but it's not tough, you know, it's it's good. It's not, um, it's not tough at all. So yeah, try it and if you like it, give me a like, give me a thumbs up and share if you do like this video. If you like these, um, uh, this new way that I'll be coming on YouTube with the combination of giving a spiritual word uh, and giving a cooking lesson or whatever you wanna call it, let me know. All right, guys, as always, I am blessed. You are blessed. We are so, so blessed. Until the next time, have a blessed week.